Coming up next, we've got Gareth Morgan on his plans to top up a crowdfunding plan to buy a slice of the Abel Tasman National Park. We're a bit confused about what's going on here and why. We'll ask Gareth directly later in the program. A passenger on board the Anthem of the Seas recounts via Skype the horrors of sailing into a monster storm confined to his room with rolling seas and 30-foot waves. We're also going to look at this quite unexpected manslaughter guilty plea in Palmerston North and uh, encephalitis. Um, and a mum with two girls born with the condition is our guest later in the program. Uh, Christchurch businessman Dwayne Major set up the Give a Little page to try to raise $2 million to tender for the Awaroa Inlet in the Abel Tasman National Park. We all know the story by now. The total is currently sitting at about $1.4 million with a week to go until the tender closes. This afternoon, though, philanthropist Gareth Morgan offered to make up the difference to $2 million, but says there are strings attached. We'll ask him about those in a minute. They're being reported that the public will have the same access as they currently have, but he will want to use part of the property for his own private benefit. In a moment, we we will hear from Gareth, but here's what Mr. Major thinks of the plan as he understands it for Gareth Morgan to pitch in. It's kind of like, well, that seems to me like a bit of a plan C. Um, but I really like the, the, the intent um, of the article I've just read now. It seems to me talking about the use of public money. It's not um, against the idea of the community spirit and the power of the people coming through. Like my favourite story from today is that Whedon's Primary School is going to do a beach-themed Musty Day on Friday to get the kids involved in the spirit of it. And I think, wow, that's so cool. So I don't think anyone's against that kind of thing. It's because, uh, to me, it's a plan C. And um, I think the idea of us continuing in this vein, because I was keen to talk to um, some media today, because I know as we put the best tender possible forward, um, getting it finished off in the next 24 hours, and I believe to give a little sight if a patient can handle that, we can really show from the just ordinary New Zealand person that we can pull off something quite amazing together. and It'll make it so much easier for everyone that's involved in involving a public campaign like this in a commercial tender process is always going to be precarious. And just watching that graph go up, it's exciting and exhilarating. And seeing the average New Zealander pull some stuff off like this, I think that's the spirit of it. And so it's a nice thing. He's made some comments about public money, but I think this is, remains a, a, maybe a plan C. A plan C, Gareth Morgan, who I think joins us on the phone now. Gareth, welcome to the programme. What, what is it you're offering and why? Well, um, my concern is that the public um, fundraising, the give a little thing, is not actually going to get there in terms of what is needed to win this tender. I mean, I know the number of two million is being bandied, bandied about, but for all we know, there could be a private bid in there for three million to take that property and use it exclusively for private use. So I think it's people need to be a little honest here um, and acknowledge that two million might not cut the mustard anyway. John. So are you prepared to stump up whatever is required to have the top tender? And how will you know what that is in a tender process? So what you've got to do is come up with a formula, get an agreement with the uh, with the vendor as to, you know, how you can make sure that this particular bid, the one involving the publicly raised money, um, gets the nod. Otherwise, really, this is very much a poke in the dark. Yeah, it is a poke in the dark. The question is, though, if you chip in, let's say you add, what, a million dollars for argument's yeah. sake, yeah. and then reserve some of it for private use by you and your family, isn't that, in a strange kind of way, the same as the tender being won by a private buyer? No. Um, let me describe the property. The property comprises of two parts. Um, some bush and some buildings, and a beach and the spit. Now, at the moment, the current owner allows the public to use the beach and the, uh, the, and the spit, right? So it gives them the access, whereas, um, you know, he or whoever owns it isn't legally obligated to do that. Now, the big danger is that when it changes hands, that the public u loses that existing use. I don't want to see that any more than other New Zealanders do. So I'm trying to come up with a formula that, you know, gets us over the line to ensure that um, the public get access to the spit and the beach and ultimately in recognition for the money that the public has put in, I would pass the whole property over 
whenever we're finished with it or 10, 15 years, whatever the number so is. So ultimately, ultimately um, is the key the word. The ultimately, is the key, yeah, the ultimately is the key word. So wh oh, when, right. when do you think ultimately might be? That, that can be written in. But the, the main thing is that, you know, the public participated bid wins. At the moment, I don't think it's got a hope. Gareth Morgan, thank you so much for joining us. Gareth Morgan, uh, who looks to be stumping up the money with strings attached.